In this video, we're talking about the, uh, we're going to talk about the third type of firm commitment. We already had forwards um, and futures contracts. Now it's time for swaps. So um, swaps, we call trade OTC. They're a firm commitment, but what makes them different to forwards or from forwards, which are also OTC traded and firm commitments is that they involve not a single settlement date, but more than one settlement date. Very often, quite a few of them. So, um, what is a swap? Let's define it. It's going to be a firm commitment. Um, always check how many T is in firm commitment. I hope that's right. But if not, don't blame me for it. I'm very bad at spelling with double letters, under which two counterparties, always two counterparties, exchange a series of cash flows. And it's from that exchange that we get the name swap. So they exchange a series of cash flows. Obviously, in the future, but not at a single point in the future, at multiples, multiple points um, in the future. And before I show you an example, let me, um, let me stress that these cash flows, um, or this, these series of cash flows, um, are quite specific, because one of them, so, let's say over here, one series is typically um, going to be variable or floating. So it's going to be based on some uh, market variable like an interest rate, um, or maybe the price of something that trades in the market and therefore changes over time. One series is typically variable or floating, so based on some market-derived um, reference price or reference rate. The most popular swaps involve interest rates, so we're going to take a market reference rate um, or price. Now, um, that's going to be a price or a reference rate which um, resets periodically. So we're going to keep updating it as time goes by. Whereas the second series of flows, so second series, one series, but the other one, I'm saying second, is typically going to be a fixed payment series. Um, however, it's possible to have, uh, with cross-currency uh, swaps, it's possible to have floating for floating, uh, or if floating, that's also possible, um, then uh, based on a different underlying then series one. So I may pay you um, cash flows based on the price of a certain commodity like crude oil and you pay me cash flows based on the price of natural gas. And obviously both will be floating because we will be checking what the price of each commodity is in the market and adjust the payments accordingly. But it's not floating for fixed or fixed for floating. It's floating for floating, but based on different underlyings. Typically, the different underlyings may be interest rates in different currencies. I pay you, for example, whatever is the current going market rate, for example, for the Swedish krona. And you pay me the interest rate based on the euro um, zone interest rate, or maybe the Polish zloty interest rate. That's just an example. Now, the most common or typical 
um, swap is going to something is going to be something called the IRS, the interest rate swap, which you'll be learning about a lot more in later sections of the curriculum. Interest sorry, interest rate swap. I omitted the rate IRS interest rate swap. And let me show you just uh, just an example. Um, I think it's it's important to go through one just for your um, overall appreciation of what's going on. This is going to be a euro, meaning the euro currency, um, let's say five year interest rate swap. And the swap rate is going to be 2.76%. And this is going to be a fixed rate of interest that will um, kind of feed into one of the series, the second series here. Now, as is typical, I'm going to draw an axis for time. On it, I'm going to represent the start date for the swap. Then we're going to have the first settlement, second settlement, third settlement, fourth settlement, and fifth settlement. Because it's a five-year swap, I've drawn five years, I guess, and I'm assuming settlement happens once a year. Although in reality, um, these swaps typically settle more frequently, like semi-annually or even quarterly. Or <laughs> because a lot of interest rate swaps, especially in the Eurozone, are centrally cleared, there is a process akin to mark-to-market um, gain or loss computation, and which involves daily settlement, like you had with futures contracts. However, I'm going to show you this example under the assumption that we don't have central counterparty clearing because that um, messes things up a little bit or makes them more complicated. So on the start date, we basically enter the swap. The swap is entered into and its parameters are agreed like the swap rate but we also agree on something called the swap notional that's the size of the contract remember in previous videos we were talking about things like 10 tons of cocoa for a futures contract well here the swap notional could be something like oh 1 million euros, or maybe, you know, let's add three zeros, 1 billion euros, why not? And what will happen is, at the subsequent dates, those settlement dates, you're going to have two sides, the two counterparties meeting sort of continuously. One of them will be the fixed rate payer and the other is someone we're going to refer to as the floating rate payer or the variable rate payer floating and variable um, are synonyms so what they will do on these dates is exchange um, cash flow series the fixed rate payer will pay whatever was pre-agreed up front, which was that fixed rate of 2.76% times the contract notional, which is uh, 1 billion euros. In return, what they will receive, because the floating rate payer will be paying this, is that uh, other series, which is actually the floating one, well, I maybe should have kept this the color green, which is based on the market reference rate, and it resets periodically. So here it will reset once a year. They will receive whatever is the market reference rate for the euro currency. For example, right now, this is something called the Euribor that gets very often used here, but it could be something else like the euro short-term rate, times that same notional. So whereas one side pays something fixed and obviously continues doing so across time, on every 
one of these settlement dates. So I'm omitting the second one simply because I don't have space here in the third one. Let's jump ahead to over here. We still have the fixed rate payer paying that pre-agreed locked in fixed 2.76% on a per annum basis. If a settlement happens um, more frequently than once per year, you would scale this down to, for example, a quarter or a, a six month period multiplied by the notional, which is uh, 1 billion euros. And the floating rate payer is the one making a payment that is unknown in advance in the sense that it's based on the current uh, level of the market reference rate or a level at the start of the relevant period. There are different ways to construct these things times the same notional. Okay, so first of all, we don't have a single settlement date. We have multiple settle date, settlement dates. Um, I'm showing you an example where payments happen uh, annually, but if they happen uh, more frequently, then scaling is necessary. We would scale the interest rates down to a quarterly or whatever period. Interest rates are typically, you know, um, expressed in annual terms, so they need to get scaled. Now, this fixed rate payer can also be known as and referred to, right, so the fixed rate payer as the floating or variable rate receiver Whereas this person down here can also be referred to or is also known as the fixed rate receiver. So you can describe them in terms of what they pay or just as well what they receive and the other, and the other side pays. Now, a very important idea behind... Um, the swap is that yeah, okay, it gets repeated. This settlement gets repeated many, many times over. But when you perform the settlement, you don't pay one series and receive the other. If both amounts are expressed in the same currency, like here, we've got a percentage multiplied by a euro denominated notional. What's going to typically happen is you're going to have net settlement, and that's the kind of the norm. So let's assume, for example, for just a moment, that the market reference rate four years down the line after the swap initiation date is uh, e.g. equal to 2%. Right. So what happens is, in theory, the floating rate payer pays 2% times the notional, and it's supposed to receive 2.76% times this same notional. So instead of making payments going kind of both ways, why not just settle on a net basis, which is what would happen? So um, we're going to have net payments. And that net payment is obviously going to be the difference between the 2.76%, which the floating rate payer is supposed to receive, and the 2%, which they're supposed to base their payment on, multiply that by the notional, the, you know, 1 billion euros, and you get a net payment going this way. So on multiple dates in the future, what will happen is we'll be checking whether the market reference rate is higher or lower than the pre-agreed fixed swap rate. And depending on whether it's high or lower, one side will make payments to the other or indeed receive payments from the other. So it's a bit like before I told you that the outcome, the payoff on a futures contract on a, or on a forward contract depends on where the spot price is relative to a forward or a futures price. Well, the swap rate is like that forward rate and we then check subsequently where the market rate is relative to this. Is it higher or lower? But we don't do it once. We do it on multiple occasions. And just the fact that maybe there was a payment going this way on one occasion 
doesn't absolutely mean that next time when we meet to settle and we check what the MRR is, it will, things will not revert and go the other way. And to finish off what is uh, a rather quick video or short video on swaps, um, I want to just jot down some typical features of these instruments. Typically, what you'll find is that the notional amounts in my example just a moment ago, that was the 1 billion euros, right? That's never exchanged between the two sides because why exchange 1 billion for 1 billion? So notional amounts are not exchanged at all. Although exchanges do happen when you have um, notional may happen when you have notional amounts expressed in different currencies, um, but other than that, at level one, you just assume that they are not exchanged. The only reason why we have them is is they are just used to compute the uh, cash flow, the payments just used to compute uh, cash flows. So like in that example, the market reference rate times the notional gives you the level of one payment. The fixed rate, like 2.76 times the same notional, gives you the other payment and compute the net amount. But it's like a multiplier only effect. It's not something that gets exchanged as such. And actually, another point, no cash is exchanged between the counterparties at the contract initiation. So when we enter the swap, we don't exchange any money, uh, just like we don't do it with forwards or futures. In the case of futures, the only thing you do is you pay a margin into um, the clearing house, collected by the clearing house, but that's like a safety deposit. We don't pay each other because the assumption is what we're doing is a fair swap. I think, and the other side thinks at the beginning, that if I pay you 2.76 and you pay me whatever is the market rate, we're entering a fair contract. That 2.76, which one of us agrees to pay to the other, is a fair a fair fair reflection of our expectations um, you know, of where interest rates will go in the future. So something we'll be talking about a lot later on is that because of this concept of fairness between what one side um, commits to do and what the other side commits to do, the initial value of a swap is zero just as it should be with forwards and typically futures. But subsequently, uh, or subsequent valuations are typically, um, uh, or, you know, the mark to market, to use a term from the previous video, are going to be different to zero because I agreed to pay you 2.76 in order to re re you know, receive the market reference rate from you. And then as time goes by, and um, the actual market reference rate may differ from what I had expected it to be, uh, that's going to either make the swap valuable for me or uh, have a negative value for me, but positive to the other side. And uh, let me just state something that I may have mentioned before swaps may require well that's what your curriculum states this is but this is becoming more and more the, the case collateral stroke margin so um or margining which is basically the posting of collateral um they are often these days cleared by CCPs, so central counterparties. This obviously reduces the uh, counterparty risk, but it also introduces that whole concept of MTM, mark to market. So you're going to have initial margin being posted, but then subsequently um, valuations, which uh, may result in margin calls and the posting of variation margin as well.